Okay. Jason Black. So I know you've watched a few episodes before, but for the audience at home, um, the whole purpose of the of my Carla stories is to kind of get into the lives of people who are ordinary but yet extraordinary, and you are extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> like. We're gas. We're gas. Gas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I. What we're going to do, we're on our way back to uh, Crepes and Cones, which is a business that you are... Yeah, partnered with with, uh, with the boys. With the boys who are... Crepes and Cones. Okay, <laughs> as if the, the name wasn't easy enough for people to guess. Um, but we're going to take a little bit of a, a ride back through your life as we go on our journey to your final destination at Crepes and Cones. Mm -hmm. um, so... Should have done that left, to be honest, would have been Well, the sat nav told me to do something know, else. The sat -nav's a well, you could, anyway. you could overrule the sat nav every day. Yeah, no, I should have, I should have really. But go on, it's all good. It's all good. We'll take it. the lights for a bit. <laughs> okay. So, you started off in music back yeah. in the day. So, yeah. tell the people at home about your musical background. Um, so, I've, you know, I've grown up in music, like, I mean, like a lot of my peers did, do you get what I'm saying? Um, just, you know, dads and uncles and that all being around, like, and involved in sound systems and stuff like that. So that was always what was going on around me, do you get what I'm saying, growing up. So um, naturally just had a passion for music. Uh, you know, as I got older, I started wanting to get involved in it more. So do you get what I'm saying, after, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of everything, do you get what I'm saying, because I'm exposed to so much at that age, you know, from reggae to dancehall to, you know, soul, R&B, New Jack Swing, whatever it is, you get what I'm saying, mm. you're growing up in it. So then, you know, there's a new scene that's flourishing that's from here, do you get what I'm saying, like jungle, garage, mm. and then, you know, later on, grime, do you get what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, like I was always like writing lyrics and trying to put down my own little bars and stuff, so like everything, you just do it as something you like to do, and it like we all did. We was just doing, we was just doing what we like to do. Like didn't really have a plan mm. as to where it was gonna take, man, because it was such a new kind of thing as well. It's like who knows? So just doing that, really, um, just spitting, trying to get in where you fit in, wherever. Like you know, trying to get on the radio stations, trying to get in the studio. So there was a there was a producer from my area called TNT. He's passed away now, but like it was like. A, a mentor to me and stuff like that. He took me in early um, in terms of the music. So I was just doing it with mates at first, but then like obviously he was a bit more established, got a lot more established. He had, he'd been putting records out from like you know jungle to garage and all that kind of all that kind of stuff. So he was from the area. We knew him, uh, but like he took me. He, 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 you know what I mean? He, he, put, um, he saw me and heard my stuff and kind of kind of took me into the studio on more of a full-time basis, you get me? Like, he gave me access to his, his space and he just worked on me. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> worked on Wait. me, you know. <laughs> Listen, this is a family show. <laughs> Wait, so yeah, like... Oh, Kelly era, come on. <laughs> no, I love it, love it. But nah, on the, on the real one though, he's like, you know, just honed in on... Because at that point, I, I, could own, I didn't even know how to structure words and stuff like okay. it, in terms of bars and stuff like that I would just write until it felt right to stop okay. <laughs> but you know you needed to know how to put there at 8 bar 16 bar 32 like you know and formulate songs mm. so he had heard the demo stuff that I'd done before and saw a bit more of me than just like a, a quote-unquote just an MC that just spits on the radio and stuff like which was cool like, I mean either way out of like for me rapping is rapping you know what I'm saying bars is bars point like the mixtape era that mixtape scene was really flourishing in America do you get mm. what I'm saying so kind of adopted that concept because it wasn't really done here like that mm -hmm. uh, our route was like really just you know get on a pirate radio station and then you um, you know get your name big and then you know you get bookings people kind of you know you start getting big that way which yeah. was cool and no you know, social media nah <laughs> not really nah not really at that point you get what I'm saying so you just had to really graft it out and really be, you had to really be good. Yeah, I just started putting together like mixtapes. I was making songs any, oh, this one's got up here still. <laughs> but um, 
So we uh we uh you missed the turn in. <laughs> we was making the songs, uh started putting together the mixtapes, started doing open mic nights even more so like as well as like doing the, the radio and the pipe radio stuff mm. and the grand stuff. So I was always kinda balancing it. Like not purposely, because it wasn't like oh, I'm trying to be this or I'm trying to be that. I'll just like to I just like to rap and MC. That's all I, I like to do. So wherever there was an opening for me to do it, I was gonna just kind of do it there. Whether it was on the Pi Radio station or it was in Islington in in some wine bar or like wine bar, you know, like some bar, whatever it was, where it's just like just people sitting at tables, yeah. just listening to like poetry and stuff like that. Yeah. My first mixtape dropped called Hitting the Streets. Mm-hmm. And at that time it was like, um, no one was really doing that. So it kind of made, it kind of stamped its own mark just in terms of like, well, what's this? Do you get what I'm saying? So even yeah. if you hadn't heard of me at that time or whatever, like you'd see a CD on the shelves in like, you know, mm-hmm. the smaller shops and stuff like that. So it kind of got people's attention. And then there, yeah, just kind of snowballed from there. I was just getting my name out and about, started putting out more mixtapes and establishing myself as like the mixtape guy kind of mm. to an extent. As well as, you know, I'm, um, you know, going on pirate radio, still still doing like little bookings wherever I could. Building it, man, building mm. it. I was really just juggling it and that kind of took off. So I was building a good name for myself as well. So. I was getting asked to feature on a lot of artists' tunes, mm. a lot of established artists, signed artists, stuff like that. So, Gemma Fox. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So I watched that, the video the other day as oh, well. Mate. That was mental. That was my first. I've never been on a video before. I didn't know how, what you're supposed to do, where. Yeah. And I literally walked on there in the clothes that I was in. I didn't have a stylist or nothing. Like, it was all, it was Gemma's thing, innit? Yeah. So it wasn't really about me. So I just came, yeah. turned up, and had to do my thing. But it was just all moves that people would. Um, take notice of it's like okay cool I'm getting a bat this that there'll be interest here and there mm. just doing that for years like just yeah. MC and doing shows putting out little projects and in 08 because I took a little break and then um, got a bit stagnant as mm. it does sometimes mm-hmm. and then um, I took a break so then I was gonna I was gonna start to put together a new project so I went to go and see Danny Weed and Target mm-hmm. and this is the thing I've known all these men anyway like from the area and stuff so I've just gone to link man on some like I just need some beats. Mm. Uh, so I went and it's like, ah, oh, you know what? So Roll Deep were putting together an album at that time as well. So that like, oh, why don't you join? Like, why don't you just join us? Mm. And we're working on a project. I'm like, all right, I did that. I started working on the Roll Deep stuff, and then that was that was gearing up as well because they were going through a little transitional moment. So, you know, you know, he's been doing a thing for time, so it's yeah. just you know, and then. Uh, but well, you weren't officially signed to Roll, with Roll Deep, were you? You were. No, I mean, so Roll Deep was just a collective of Mandem. Like, okay. it wasn't assigned. Only when, like, it put out projects, like, if it got put out, like, you know, like the, like the last album and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The, the album that I joined to mm-hmm. do, that wasn't a signed thing. It was just, like, putting out ourselves. Okay. Um, and, then, and then, yes, off the back of that, you know, always working, always recording, always just hanging out anyway in the mm-hmm. studio and stuff. Wiley had um, brought this tune and a couple of men got on it and it like it got signed. Mm. Then obviously as that goes, you know, Labour wants another one and you know, so you just end up signing a deal. Yeah. Uh, to the label as, as Roll Deep individually. We didn't really sign contracts individually. It was yeah. just signed as Roll Deep. Yeah, yeah, and the part of the our journey involves you kind of reminiscing about your cars that were significant in your life yeah. at a point. Yeah. So during that roll deep era, did you have a driving license? What were you what right? Were you on the so road? I mean, did even before that and during that, like, oh. um, nah, I didn't have a license. So yeah, I'll just be driving around in just whatever <laughs> whips, like bangers, yeah, run arounds, ringers. You mean you were somebody was driving you or just? No, nah, yeah. I was. Oh, what, can I say that on this family show? <laughs> and that's just the want. truth. That's just what it was. Yeah, I was. I didn't have a license. Damn yeah. nice insurance nothing I was just driving around in cars mm. just to really get from A to B mm-hmm. um, and just you know because you want you want little cars don't you, you yeah. want to come off the street a bit so I'd have little bangers and whatever um, and even just to get to bookings as well do you get what I'm saying mm. we'll find something like pff, stolen cars uh, <laughs> <laughs> mate listen if <laughs> mate yeah listen I can't be hearing no <laughs> JTK Nah, this this is like when we was mad young, like so you just you know what I'm saying? Like it was mm. just literally like just trying to get to the next 
destination. Mm. Literally, like, so. Yeah, I had all sorts of things, man. Driving around in like, you know, and I always had like, all the, the thing is, it was easy come, easy go with them yeah. kind of cars as well. So like, one got nicked, one got burnt, one I just left <laughs> in in um, Great Yarmouth or somewhere. I just left it. I just went home. I didn't so want how it. How did you even get back for Great Yarmouth? Isn't I like jumped in someone else's car. Okay. So basically, you no, know, with that. So I will tell you what happened with that. Um, it was a Fiat Bravo, yeah. Mm. <laughs> It'll bang up with for about eight bills or something like that mm. off my barber. And then, uh, so I was whipping that around a bit. Head gasket went, because obviously it's a it's rubbish car, isn't it? Yeah. Head gasket's gone. I bought, I paid for a new head gasket. But obviously, with a head gasket, you got to kind of ease it in after you fix it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so I've had a booking in Great Yarmouth with Gemma Fox, because I'm on the Gemma Fox kind of tour thing with her. Do you get mm. what I'm saying? Opening up and that. So, and plus, I was on a tune with her. Um, so I had a booking but me and Titch was rolling all the time mm. we had our thing going on as well do you get what I'm saying so I like we was together I was like ah oh, boom I got this booking but I've got to roll up with them he wasn't driving at that time because we, we, that's it we was at a video we, okay. we were shooting a video together and a couple other men I drove my car to the video uh, Gemma and them lot and that team they've linked me at the video to come take me to the thing I said but I've drove so I was like cool alright Titch why don't you <coughs> roll I'm going great yama if you take my car in it you drive it, I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna jump in the thing. We want to jump in the thing in the in the van, whatever. Drive is like, yeah, cool. Obviously, Titch <laughs> being the, the most erratic, he's obviously whipping my car. Cause I know he is. Like obviously I didn't see it, but I know he's rinsing it down there. <laughs> of course he is. And um car's mash up, innit? Got there and didn't start again. Oh, <laughs> but by this time, I had enough of the car anyway. I've got yeah. my eight bills worth out of it, so okay. I didn't really, I didn't really care. Like, uh. um, so it was just, it was just itched up on one, on one, on some residential area. I just went and, I don't, you know, I didn't even take nothing out of the car. I just, uh, I just left. I just said, ah, you know what, I'm going home, bro. I can't bother with this. I just jumped in the van and went home, left it there. Don't know what happened to that. <laughs> Um, it's probably got like some uh, parking fee or toll fee from 1968. The thing is, these <laughs> things wasn't in my name either. I was just driving around no license insurance of course you or nothing. Were. So they were just anybody's car anyway. Like, because someone could have a free car there, man. <laughs> so, yeah, That's man. That's scrap. That's scrap. Scrap, whatever. Yeah. yeah so, uh, so, yeah, let's jump forward then. Um, you've done Roll Deep. You're kind of like you put you're putting music out but something else is in you from my hair you you were like a guy that really didn't like to have a boss um it's not that i was against having a boss like you know i understand the hierarchy and you have to work your way certain positions but at the same time i didn't feel i had to work for it you know what is i just i just find it more interesting doing my own things like okay. i get more interest and more satisfaction with doing what i want to do mm -hmm. so cool um so I'd always do stuff. I'd always be trying to, like, anything I had a passion about, I would try and see how I can do it myself, mm -hmm. whether it's, like, clothing or just whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Trying to revolutionise the game somehow. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even with music. So, yeah, just just having ideas and figuring out something to do. So I'd always do something. You know, not everything went well. That's like, yeah. what it is, trial and error, innit? Mm -hmm. The Roll Deep thing, we'd, we'd got, like, a lot of chart success at that time. Do you get what I'm saying? After that, like, during that deal... Young Born Records, obviously you're touring everywhere, you're doing, you're doing famous and all that stuff, mm. yeah. How was you as famous? Nah, I was, ne <laughs> I was never famous, like I, I wasn't, I didn't know how to be famous. But how did you cope, you must, but people recognising you, how did you cope with that attention Nah, but I mean, time, people it? always kind of recognise me from just before that anyway, like uh -huh. so, with, with the commercial success, it was a weird one because um, they, uh, what, it was like, it was more, the song was bigger than anything. Than mm. even what it was like, you never really got the chance to really under know who Roldy was during that time. Mm. It was that that narrative wasn't being pushed through from the label or anywhere. Do you know what I'm okay. saying? It was more just a single, like do you know what I'm saying. And these are all learning things that you learn in it. Because I remember at the time, I'm I'm trying to push for like, like what certain things, certain ideas, or certain you know what we should be doing, like to make things a bit interesting. But the label just wanted to sell the record, and that's it. Like okay. go on this TV show, go like. It could have been anyone in the group. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I was always mindful of, you know, these things don't last forever. Yeah. From the beginning. So, you know, um, 
I would just watch, you know, I'd carry on with what I'm doing outside of music as well, like in terms of ideas and just try and explore things. So yeah. I would, um, what did I do? I signed a publishing deal. Okay. So I signed my own publishing deal. Off the back of that, I got a deal. And then um, I was doing like writing and stuff for other like artists and stuff, going to writing camps at least and doing stuff. Yeah. I, I went over to the States. I was over there, so I was there. I was doing like writing sessions for like Ti and um, Lupe Fiasco and okay. and yeah, some of our Connor Cody, some some name like that. Some people there, like different different artists. Mm. It was it was a mad experience. Um, so anyway, doing all these things at the same time, like like you're saying with your success of you know chart hits and that. Like obviously after a while, it's gonna run out in it. So mm. you know, I'd see little signs of you know bookings are like getting a bit slower now the fees are coming down a bit me and a former partner of mine we was always like working on little ideas and stuff so then with my um with my uh, publishing deal money yeah. some of it not all of it obviously so i was looking at it like why this is just gonna run out if i ain't got something else to do but so sensible yeah so just like invested in developing this new idea that we you know mm -hmm. that we had like um this shoe spray. <laughs> this shoe spray. This shoe spray, which, you know. Was... Is what, like the number one shoe spray in. I would say so. <laughs> I would say so. Um, in everywhere. Yeah, it was Just... nothing. So it was literally a case of, okay, cool, got this thing. You know, we need to. I, I like, for me, I'm, I'm someone who's always into my shoes anyway, like, but in particular, clean shoes. I like to wear a lot of white shoes. Yeah, would well, you say you're OCD about that? Oh, yeah, pretty much. Like, okay. so I was always using stuff around the house to clean my shoes, whatever it was brushes, mm. soaps, whatever, washing machine, whatever I was doing, because I'd keep it fresh. Um, so, developing this was perfect for me, do you know what I'm saying? Because I understood it, I understood people like me and, and, and that kind of market. So, when it comes to like branding it now it was just it was all it, it it's all felt pretty natural do you get what i'm saying yeah plus i had like one of my mates um he's a graphic designer so and like we've been working so it's kind of we have a good understanding of you know what's what's good mm -hmm. and what's kind of what's going to kind of you know just dope visually and then yeah. just what would work and how to position stuff so he um he so Obviously, he got the brief of what we need to do in it. Like, so he did it. Like, he, he put together like the logo colorways and stuff. So we just worked on that, and then we had we had this can in it, mm -hmm. Prep Protect. It's, it's stages in it, so it's just like a branding exercise first. So like, I'll literally just be running around with it everywhere. You okay. know what I'm saying? I'll be taking it because at that time I'm still I'm still fully doing music and mm -hmm. on tour and going different countries and I'm everywhere. So. I would utilize. I just got into hustle mode at this point in it, mm -hmm. so it just I just needed to raise awareness of it, and just using the, the knowledge I've got from all the years of being an independent artist, yeah. self marketing, self promotion, just yeah. figuring out ways how to position yourself, how you want to be seen, perceived. Like, I just use that to put towards the the, the can. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because yeah, at this point now, you're this is the artist, so you know what well, you know a lot of things you know and learn along the route like you just apply it to that mm. in terms of okay cool like it's something you just got to be ready as an MC or artist whatever trying to get up the ladder you got to be ready to perform you got to be ready to show out when it's time do you know what mm. I'm saying because you never know when the next opportunity is like or how good this opportunity can be so I'll be taking it everywhere I'll be everywhere with it I'm on tour so I know I need to get the name out. I'll be I'll be like you know it became a bit of a party trick so I would, you know, throw ketchup on my shoes. Yes. And wash it off. Do you get what I'm saying? That became yeah. a big thing. Do you get what I'm saying? It's on your website, isn't it? Yeah. The, on the um, on the the Back to the Future lace ups. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, <laughs> that's just something that's become normal now. Yeah. Like what I'm saying, like in the beginning, it was just something I was used to do on my camera phone. Yeah. In my kitchen. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? And then I'll, you'll bring it down to the office. Then we'll just do it on bare different trainers. But like, um, yeah, I would do that. I'll just film it on my phone. But and everything I did was deliberate. Like, I could have used cameras, but I thought, you know what, with, with something like this, I want to show people, like, I don't want no cutaways or cuts or edits. It has to be, like, it needs to look as authentic as possible, as, mm -hmm. as it is. So I don't want you to think this is a camera trick or it's all lit up well and whatever. So I'll do it purposely on my, on my camera phone in my kitchen so you can see just yeah. how well it's working. When you were developing it, were there ketchup experiments that didn't go so well? Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> like, there'll be all kind of things that didn't go well. Um, but again, yeah, that was like the R&D process in it. So you yeah. just go back and forth with the lab and then say like, you know, we need it a bit stronger here or we need 
to be like this or like do you know what I mean and you go back you wait for the sample to come back yeah. again you test it again until you get to a you know a happy medium like where you can mm. do you know what I mean because you can go too strong where and then but it starts destroying actual fabrics and, and whatever and then you can and then it could just not be effective at all so you got to find that balance mm. so uh, yeah like I was just doing these things I was running around with it everywhere um and like obviously I can leverage like my mates essentially, do you know what I'm saying? All my friends who I've grown up with in the scene for years, like you just organically just showing them anyway, in it. So yeah. they they they're helping you by like then that you know doing a video with it or just promoting it for you, do you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I've always like big up everyone that's that supported it from the from the ground, do you get what I'm saying? And that's important with any brand and I always say that with brands and stuff you need to build that relationship with people like to organically sell your products like because everything we're so savvy now everybody's yeah. so savvy to like all this bullshit promotions all this yeah. fake like kind of oh look at this i love this but you like you know people are selling anything because yeah it's because it's just the teeth white now <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, Black tummy tea. fit teas, all these things. I mean, everyone for do their thing and business or whatever. But yeah, like, you know, like I like a bit of, I just like it to be organic to an extent. I understand it can't be all, all like, and you know, mm. but as much as you can. Then I was running around with it everywhere. I took it, I was take it on tour. It would always be on tour with me, so I'd bump into artists like, yo, look at this. Oh, sick, bro. Mm. They would, I'd take a picture of it, like, and, you know, just building, and then, and then we start, you know, we build a website start um selling it online yeah do you know what i'm saying a little big cartel thing quickly like you just be happy for any sale like yeah and it just, do you remember, it's you, do you remember the day you got your first sale um, how you felt yeah i mean that was the sickest feeling you know yeah. what i'm saying like right someone actually cares about this um yeah a like lot it, of people care about it now yeah, yeah now obviously because yeah, it's built then, and it's yeah. grown but like in the beginning stages you, you got you got to take them steps for yeah. it to get anywhere do you well, know what, I'm saying? what were your milestones then yeah, so the milestone first of all, cool, get a website, cool, done the website, selling through the website, cool. Now we need to get to the trade show so we can try and get some custom, do you get what I'm saying? Um, and that's what happened. Uh, did, a, did a show called Stitch in, in Islington. Mm-hmm. I'm not even sure it even happens anymore. So we did that, that was our first ever thing, but a lot of like the retailers will go to this to this show to like pick up brands and look at what's new and what's coming out. It, it was mainly clothing brands, to be honest. Like, it was, I swear it was only us that was like accessories there. Um, okay. And I have to big up Joey Essex because Joey Essex was probably one of the first retailers. Like he was just launching his shop, mm-hmm. Fusey at the time. He was, you know, he was still heavy into the Taui thing. So uh, him and his missus was um, at the show looking for brands to put uh, to put in there. So she saw it and they was, you know, they really liked it. At the same show, there was a lady called Donna as well who was from a from a distributors who was um, dealing, who dealt with a load of brands. Mm-hmm. She saw it, like she she really liked it. She took it into a, a boss and whatever and spoke about it. And then we ended up getting a distribution and that same from that same show yeah. as well, which was yeah. good because um, uh, the guy there, Steve Spalacy, he was like heavy into the retailers. He had a lot of experience, got a lot of connections yeah. over there with people. So he was very key and instrumental in into getting us into the retailers. There was a girl called Paige as well, I remember. She um she was working at Bank Fashion. Like she kinda took it in as well. Like she kinda let them know about it. So I mean a lot of you know a lot of key people who yeah, you know it's good really, that you remember these people as well, you know. Yeah, 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 for come. sure, because it's instrumental at the end of yeah. the day, like about these things, who who knows what would have happened, you get what I'm yeah. saying? I was always confident in it being there, but like at the end of the day it was these people that saw it first and took that chance, you get what I'm yeah. saying? And, and from there, it's just snowball. It, it will just snowball, and it. Like, obviously, you got to do the business behind the scenes in terms of how you're dealing with the retailers. But just being able to get in front of them through the distributors and whatever, and be able to have a, a solid conversation. And that started growing, getting into more and more retailers, and then, but at the same time, just keeping making sure the brand is being perceived in the right light and being positioned in the right areas. What um, did you want from the brand when people connect it? What did you want people to think about Crep Protect? So, obviously, it's, it's something I wanted to make sure, like, at the end of the day, it's called Crep Protect as well. Like, the word Crep, even, Crep is even just something of our culture, do you get what I'm saying? I really wanted to, to just uh, make sure it's something that it has an identity with London and, and mm. the UK, just in general, do you get what I'm saying? But, like, from that, like, I mean, that's a Caribbean word, do you get what I'm saying? Even, yeah. yeah, we... we that from our grandparents who used to use that word, you get what I'm saying? But it's become ingrained into UK culture through urban culture and whatever. So that's just something we identify with. So it's really and I and that just that just really just 
that's it for everything like across the board so it's a UK brand we do things in our way like you know um, and you know just, just unapologetic about it do you know what I'm saying so in terms of even content and and how that's seen and how that's made you know try and be original all the time with it um, and who you kind of deal with like dealer like I've always placed a lot of um, importance on dealing with like grassroots as well as like you know top people with big followings or whatever but because I've understood I've come through that kind of ranks as well just through being an artist and whatever like and mm. you, you see the difference of what how you, you gain brand loyalty with people that you know you deal with at an early stage you know mm. and you know just just follow their journeys and whatever like, and you can you, you can end up helping each other at the end of the day because it's a two way thing like a lot of, a lot of brands and stuff like to take 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 Yes. And then especially in this day and age, it's, like it's about having respect for the consumer and, and, and the target audience as well as, you know what I mean? At the end mm. of the day, you, you want people to buy your things. You know, you want people to leverage through or whatever and help. But like it goes both ways. That's how I feel. So maintaining the content style, you know, uh, the tone of the brand, you know, how it speaks, how it, how it um, comes across to people. Yeah. Um, you know, and all that you can put in a brand book, which you did. I'm listening to you speak. And it sounds like you went and did some like marketing degree at university. No, no, no. But never. you went stopped at college, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped at college. <laughs> Just the bag off through college. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is learnt from like just life. Yeah, that yeah, definitely like just life experience and just being in the music. The music showed me everything because that just that just taught us how to be self-sufficient like it's not gonna happen if you ain't gonna make music i mean the labels ain't jumping at you yeah do you get what i'm saying and and so you just have to learn to work it and leverage what you have mm. so then at that time you know um social media is 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 here now do you know what i'm saying the myspaces facebook's and whatever so you have to learn to leverage these things and that's what we was doing as artists anyway yeah there's so many things you can do and then how to um engage with people mm. in ways and what not to do like what to do what not to do what's too much and what's too little that like, you know what kind of goes over people's heads what is like just ends up being a bit like rah because you know like you can you can um you can keep knocking like you know if you if you if you do social media like you, you have twitter for instance and you keep trying to sell your product like every tweet is bloody hey buy this it's like people don't yeah. take no notice after a while like no matter how good or wicked your product or thing is like mm. and that's always just you know just careful of not being those guys as well do you know what I'm saying because you can fall into that by every minute okay look here's how we look at the ketchup falling off the shoes like every other message it's like yeah we get it now like because that's how I would feel like yeah because at the end of the day I'm the I'm I am the actual demographic yeah of who we're selling to so you know who speaks better to people than us do you mm -hmm. get what I'm saying so um yeah so it's just kind of really understand this and this is just all for experience so it's just like I said with everything it's just applying it I didn't have no degrees I didn't learn it I just it was just natural like I'd, 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 I'd go off of energy and vibes and just mm. what's kind of feels real at the time um, and that's it that's how I just make my decisions like, who were your role models growing up <laughs> I don't know <laughs> role models um, yeah because you're a role model now kids look up to you there's lots of respect for you online um, like, yeah um, I, mean, I, don't... I, I mean like a lot of people like any the I respect, world, you know, yeah, so, yeah, a lot like, of people I respected, like coming out. Like I, the thing is, I always used to, I always, I always used to roll with people older than me. Like I never used to roll with people that much my age. Mm. So I always had like a bit of guidance. Do you get what I'm saying? Or yeah, I had that kind of person over me to say, "Yo, fix up," or that's mm. you know, what's that? Yeah. Sometimes. Um, so you know, I had, I had mates like that, um, and obviously your parents are always gonna like be some sort of influence on yeah. you, do you get what I'm saying like just even it's just down to the smallest things just, you get what I'm saying like just even just knowing how to deal with people and just being good with people like live good with people because you know what it's energy in it like you keep a good energy you know it comes back not to say you're doing it because of that but you see it like Can't hurt. more retailers then you know you start moving territories now do you get what I'm saying mm -hmm. so you know you got to know to America you want to try and break America like so that'll be a whole Different but that market tackle. must have been saturated with uh, yeah yeah right? no, yeah there's definitely but you know what it is from from when we came out here like people started coming up with their brands they started to get saturated kind of quick here as well mm. yeah, I don't really see them brands too much anymore but at that time but yours was, was endured yours, yeah. is, yours is like the product but, now right because they were using 
threat protect as their as their influence. Do you get what I'm saying? You can see it. They would they would always deny it. At the time I've had to learn this is like I was so competitive in terms of like if I'm doing something you shouldn't dare to try and do it like what do you mean <laughs> but that's business and you it's learn true. that that's what happens people just they, they, they copy in it and mm. then they do their thing okay cool but I was just so offended I used to be so offended by it I, was, I can't believe this like down there we'll be doing all their little pulling all their little fast moves to try and like outdo you or you know paint your thing in a in a in a bad light and that there why theirs is better and I just think ah oh, but obviously you know you've got to do that I've had to learn that that's what you've got to do but mm. my thing was just at least but that's not like, how you carry on respect business, it. I didn't yeah, yeah I didn't but I've understood that's what people do in okay. this world okay cool so I, what, while we're on that point so give me a couple of harsh lessons that you've learned through the the crepe protect journey um, you have to learn that no one's really your friend like that in this business world. Like, because obviously I've just come from music into doing business. I'm from a creative sector, do you get what I'm saying? I'm always creating and trying to think about things and I'm not, I wasn't business minded. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So you always got to make remember that people ain't, you know, they ain't your friends no matter how they're trying to come across, you know, what should you do business with, for sure. Like, you know, probably do some background checks on, on people. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? And like, just literally like, look into them a bit more because mm. the business is, is is a ruthless world do you get yeah. what I'm saying no matter how cool someone tries to come across it's usually a tactic um, um, do you know what I don't think there's any one like I mean everything at its time was wicked do you get what I'm saying so we even like getting your first retailer that was like the best thing in the world mm. you know what I'm saying so then after there what's, what's better than that um, getting another retailer <laughs> now you got now you're in you know, loads of that one retailer and then a next brand of retailer comes in and then they want it all, they want to roll out in all their shops and then mm. like, these are all like, it's like, yeah, landmarks, yeah. it's like, rah. So it's always, it was always happening. Even just getting to that first trade show was a big deal. Like, yeah. oh my God, we're doing a trade show. Like seeing your name tag with, you know, director. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and your brand, you get what I'm saying? Mm. And it's just mad, like, um, and then like just loads of things so then on from there like doing like dope collaborations because everything was like positioning so still like a positioning thing like we would do we're in the retailers now like mm -hmm. um aligning with certain brands now so like when i did so even when i did like um uh so i did this there was there's this festival called the street fest that happens and like i've always had a relationship with the, with the adidas brand mm -hmm. so uh, at that point um I was always trying to work. Is there some way we can work? So I like, you know, because I, I could have these conversations with them. Like, can we work? I need, I want to do something. Let's do something. I've got the spray. Let's, can we collaborate somehow? So I would always be on to like, um, we need to collaborate a spray. We could do an Adidas rap. Like, we could do an Adidas Creptex spray. Let's do it. Like, yeah. we need to do it. Um, it took time. But the first step towards that was like, there was, there was a street fest festival and then, um, so what they, were, they had an activation within it, like an art activation kind of thing. And we just figured out any way to get me involved. They were really cool at the time, like Paula mm. and Aquia and that, that, when that department was there. So um, they, you know, they basically let me do a collaborative can with them. Okay. So it was like Adidas Creptic, like just to have that together was yeah, mental, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, it was like a, felt like a massive deal, but at, at the same time, it's the perception of that also, cause I'm no like, this can look massive to people that's just from looking in from the outside. Yeah. Like, and you can see, okay, this brand's making moves, you know mm. what I'm saying? And it will build that, so then it builds more confidence in the brand. You go and see it in the shop now, you'll buy that over something else because you see like, it's getting co-signed and you know what mm. I mean? By the big dogs and whatever. So these are things are all deliberate. These are reasons why I wanted to do these things. So we did that. It was a small, small activation as well. It wasn't even massive, but it meant a lot. You know, from there, they will then ring me, they will then hit me up years later to say, oh, Adidas now want to do a collabor a, 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 an official collaborative can with you yeah. and roll it out. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's that. those seeds were set from, from, day. from then, do you get what I mean? Because we had done that little activation and because it's a conversation that I've been knocking on the door with for ages. Um, so that was that was massive. And then just, but then even then, so then doing the NBA collaboration, mm -hmm. that was a big deal. Like, I remember I'd sit there, like, we sat there with my colleague Becky at the time and um, we was talking about, like, doing an NBA can and we should do, like, teams, different cans and rare, rare, rare and mm. all this stuff. 
thought that would be sick if we could pull that off. Um, and long story short, we did. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We did. Uh, so we got to be, you know, next to the NBA as as a product. So That's this it. is gonna like really send the message out now. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And really position the brand now as well. We've been in this uh, Land Rover Discovery for a minute now. What are your first perceptions of the Discovery? You've been in the Discovery before. before. I've been in one before. You're, pleas- and you're pleasantly surprised by this one. It's, it's, yeah, it's decent. It's, it's comfy. Decent. Yeah. It's, it's comfy, it's got room. Um, We're nice and high as well. It's nice and that? high because this is really what it is. I've, I've, never, I've never had an SUV myself okay. ever. And You've had a Z4, right? Was that yours? The Z4, the small thing. Yeah, the small thing. Oh my god. <laughs> what was the Z4. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ages That's one ago. of my favourite cars, you know? Really? Yeah, yeah I love for a girl thing. like you are, I could imagine. Yeah, it's, so I'm it's, wondering it's, what it's were you nice, doing in the Z4. And sexy. Yeah, I'm too tall for that. <laughs> um, I just had that for a little while. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't that wasn't mine like oh, okay. that. Okay. Um, I, just had I that was for like, a bit. uh, side eye. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just had that for a bit. Um uh while they were sorting my car out actually. Okay. Um yeah, uh, the Z4 was cool, um, but these are cool. So I've never had an SUV, so I'm just like, um, it's time for an SUV now. Yeah, I want to climb were... up into a car now instead of. Well, this one's got a step. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just feel like I just want to. I just want that kind of presence on the road now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually in the midst of of, of copying one, of, not this, um, but you know, a Range Rover. I'm just gonna go and buy yeah, one. Yeah, I hear you want an SVR. <sighs> I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just, like, you know what? Maybe I don't know what I want because you know is I don't know much about these cars. Okay. On what's what and what's good and what I'd obviously know the SVR. There's always an SVR in 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 these cars and there's always the monster one. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether I need all that. Okay. I don't know. So you just decided that you wanted the SVR, but you don't know why you wanted it. <laughs> because I just saw I just saw it was something. So I said maybe I need that one. <laughs> I don't know. I might not need that one. I'm gonna have the big things over there. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna look through the. Well, I have looked through options. I, I tell her like, okay. so it's either the the Sport or the Vogue. I'm, I'm I've had them all. I built I built both of them. Okay. Sport. What are the main options that you you were like? I've For got me, to have and that. this is it. I'm not the car car man like that. So okay. looking further into it, the SVR is maybe I don't I probably don't need that mm. and spending the extra for something I'm not really fussed about. Okay. For me, all I want is black wheels and a panoramic sliding panoramic roof really everything right. else because i'd have features in the car listen i've had a car i've had cars for years like i've had like my last car I had i had that for about two three years okay there's buttons on it i'd never touched before i didn't even know what it done people get them i can't tell me oh that does that you know i'm like oh is it so like i, I, that, I that shows me i know i'm not really fussed about a load of things but mm. i just want I just want space. I want the roof. Some the sunroof is imperative. Panoramic is a beautiful addition. I must say, yeah, one of my favorite things. So that's definitely what I put on all of them. And a nice, just a nice interior, man. I think I'm gonna go with the peanut butter as well. Like the I like pe- that. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. I like okay. that. Okay. The one with the other car that I was gonna get you had that peanut butter interior. Yeah. So that would have been the ultimate surprise for you. Yeah, a mate came over um, in, the, in his Lamborghini truck. And he had the peanut the butter Aurus. as well. The Aurus, mate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah. That was a... That, that was for the NBA. That was an experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So what did you think about that? Because that's brand new. Well, I knew it was going to be sick, innit? it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gassed that he's got it. Not gassed. Yeah, gassed. Because you know why? No, not gassed why I'm surprised. He's, he's a Lambo man anyway. Like yeah. Lamborghini call him when they got something new, you know, oh, like okay. that. Okay, them customers them there, customers, they're select like, customers. Yeah, like yeah, it. he can really flex <laughs> if he wanted to. Like, they love basketball, innit? Like, uh, they love basketball, so they will go into the, the game anyway. So they're like, yeah, yeah we're going, all right, cool. I'm getting down there, because they, they live, live from my area as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I gotta come get you. I was like, yeah. So I was like, oh shit. So we're almost, um, we're not far from the destination yeah hopefully everyone can see us in the lack of light (laughs) (laughs) but (laughs) um so what i was thinking more is like um what next for you that you've so for me it's it's a year now since you've kind of taken back a step back from yeah um, yeah, day-to-day stuff and all that and stuff like that so um yeah it's just really it's really freed up more time to explore um you know more business and stuff like that um so like yeah, what the, the one one of them was is Creps and Cones, mm-hmm. which I partnered with with the boys with, and um, 
yeah, so we're kind of putting our energy into that. So how did that. you come about d- deciding that you wanted to do the restaurant? Oh, so with this now, it was, um, I actually had the boys. So I, when I was, um, when we was launching the, the New Era hat spray, mm-hmm. with New Era, I wanted to get the boys to do the promotional advert that we was doing for it. I okay. thought it'd be cool. Um, so, you know, I've got them down. So on set, when we're filming in between, in between shots and stuff, we were just chatting and, um, Crept told me like, oh, I'm thinking about doing this, uh, this restaurant, this, this dessert restaurant thing. I'm like, yeah, that's sick. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Crept of course, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. We can. Um, and he was like, oh, would you, would you like to get involved? Like, would you get involved? Mm-hmm. I was like, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. So she said, yeah, let's do it. So then that was it, really. That was it. Uh, you know, did they did the paperwork, and then we just started putting the money into it, and then, do you know what I mean? So how, uh, where are we, this summer, is, is it going to be one year this summer? It may, yeah. Okay, it so how's the, the first, first year, year been? It's, it's tough, man, business, it's tough. Yeah? yeah, they say restaurant business is hard and it's not like I ever like overlooked that, but it really is tough, but mm. it's good at the same time, man. Okay. It's definitely good, like, especially like, you know, just knowing that, especially like providing opportunities for like, you know, the youth in the area and stuff like that, because we get a lot of young people that work there, yeah. so it provides opportunities for them. And just just being able to offer like something a bit different to the market. There's no one that's like just even as like a, a culture and stuff. Like we don't really do stuff like this enough or at all. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. I mean, people do do it. Let me not take away from people who have you know open restaurants and stuff. But you know, in terms of people that are in the limelight and stuff, like we have, we almost have a bit of a um, uh, what do you call it responsibility to kind of be seen to be doing these kind of yeah. things. You get what I'm saying? So that's why it was even more so of a bit of a no-brainer to kind of get involved. I actually spoke to my brothers about it as well, like, mm-hmm. when uh, I was making the decision to do it. It was like, yeah, Because you're one it. of six, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All boys. All boys. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, it was cool. I was thinking, you know, linking up with, with the boys, with um, the boys and that, like, so it's, it's good to see, like, people can kind of get, in, you know, inspired by that and do their own things mm. or get involved or, you know, you can make, more of us do some more business together and do you know what I mean and just use our money a bit a bit differently as well you've had some negative comments uh, about the business in the first year how do you guys as a as a threesome sit down <laughs> Easy. <laughs> right. listen I can't say nothing <laughs> as a collective yeah that's fair, that's fair. <laughs> as a collective how do you sit down and then discuss and handle any neg- negativity that comes back to you guys? Um, I mean, it, it's, it's the thing is, it, it all restaurants are gonna, you're never gonna be able to please everyone. Mm. Um, but granted, at the same time, it's a new business, and there's gonna be teething problems with certain things. It's just, it's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, but how we deal with it, we take it, we take, we take it in, we look at it, and we try and just fix whatever the problem is. Like, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. our aim is to really just provide the best we can do. Do you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we are new and still learning. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Just, that's it, really. That's all, all we can do. People you know just I mean? give me time, innit? it? Yeah, just give man some time. <laughs> give man some time. Like, <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. Like, it's not easy. Like, we're, de- we're dedicated to this. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? Like, so it's not like it's not it's not a neglect thing mm-hmm. things are gonna you know something might happen you know someone you might not have got your food on time maybe that time but that's not on purpose like okay. it's not with, yeah, yeah. You it's know, not, you it's know not on purpose hungry. you know yeah but you know i get it i understand <laughs> at the same time we all understand yeah. that you know we, we we want a certain level of service when we go anywhere like we get it in it but, i'm going in there the bus i'm expecting to get fed on time when i <laughs>